Amazing new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Vel here at Science Away, and today we are assembling the 40 Vision Animal Cell. This is the second cell I have gotten, and this completes the 40 Vision Science series. There's only two. There's the plant cell and animal cell. So without further ado, let's go ahead and read the information while I am assembling the animal cell. The word cell comes from the Latin cellula, which means a small room. Robert Hooke was the first to study and record cells by using a microscope. The descriptive name cell for the smallest living biological structure was also given by him and used in his book that published in 1665. In 1837, a Czech Jan Evangelista Perkine first observed small granules at the plant tissue through a microscope. The first cell theory was first developed in 1839 by Matthias Jakob Schleiden and Theodore Schwann. The cell is a basic functional part in the smallest living unit in all known living organisms. Most of the living cells are very small in size and measured in unit ohm and weighed in nanogram. However, the eggs are the biggest single cell in most of the organisms. As we know, the ostrich egg is the biggest of them all. One single animal and plant may consist of a greater number of cells in different types, which are called multicellular. Some complex organisms, such as a human adult, may have over 100 trillion cells. On the other hand, some organisms may only consist of a single cell, such as bacteria and amoeba, which are called unicellular, unicellular excuse me, protist or monad. The animal cell is enclosed in a thin, double-layer cell membrane. This small room contains many different organelles, including a membrane-bound nucleus. Unlike plant cells, animal cells do not have a cell wall. Next, we're going to read about the different parts that make up the animal cell. First up is the nucleus. The nucleus is the most obvious organelle in most of eukaryotic cells, which is enclosed in a double membrane and consists of most of the cell's genetic material, organized as multiple long linear DNA molecules in a complex and large with a large variety of proteins, such as histones, to form chromosomes. Next is the mitochondria. It is a bacteria-sized power generator. It provides the energy needed for a cell to move, to divide, and to produce secretory products. They may have different shapes depending on the cell type. Scientists found that mitochondria contain DNA too. We call it mitochondrial DNA. Next is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is a vast network of membrane-bound vessels and tubules responsible for the production of hormones and other secretory, not secretory, products. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, has different functions depending on the specific cell type. Next is the ribosomes. These are packets of RNA and protein. As an essential role in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, it assembles individual amino acids into polypeptide chains of proteins. This process is called translation. Next, we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. It appears pebbled due to numerous ribosomes on its surface. Proteins synthesized on these ribosomes are collected in the endoplasmic reticulum for transport throughout the cell. Next is cytoplasm. It is a semi-transparent jelly-like fluid that fills most cells. It consists of three major elements, the cytosol, organelles, and inclusions. The cytosol is the soup inside all the cells. Next we have the cytoskeleton. It is the skeleton contained within the cytoplasm, which helps to maintain cell shape. Actually, the internal movement of cell organelles, such as cell locomotion and muscle fiber contraction, could not function without the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton consists of three primary protein filaments, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate fibers. Next is the Golgi complex. It is also called the Golgi apparatus, Golgi body, or dictyosomes. This important apparatus has the function to manufacture and package the macromolecules such as proteins and lipids that are synthesized by the cell. 
The Golgi complex plays as a part of the endomembrane system of eukaryotic cells, which regulates protein traffic and performs metabolic functions. Next we have the secretory vessels. They are membrane-bound vessels derived from the Golgi complex and contain material, such as hormones and neurotransmitters, that is to be released from the cell and then transported to the cell surface for release. Next we have the nucleolus. It is a prominent structure inside the nucleus, which is where ribosomal RNA is produced. Scientists found that some cells have more than one nucleus. Next we have the centrosome. The centrosome in animal cells is also called the microtubule organizing center, or MTOC, which consists of a pair of centriole that is only in animal cells. During animal cell division, the centrioles replicate and the centrosome divides. Then the two centrosomes move to the opposite ends of the nucleus and the microtubules of the centrosomes grow into a spindle which is responsible for separating replicated chromosomes into the two daughter cells. Next, we have the peroxisome. It is a membrane-bound packet of oxidative enzymes. In animal cells, they protect the cell from their own production of toxic hydrogen peroxide. That is the way that white blood cells produce hydrogen peroxide to kill bacteria. Peroxisomes also help to break down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Lastly, we have the cell membrane. All cells have a skin called the cell membrane or plasma membrane. It is semi-permeable lipid bilayer and made of phospholipid, which is compatible with water both within the cytosol and outside of the cell. It acts as a protective barrier to the uncontrolled flow of water. It's also made more complex by the presence of numerous proteins that are crucial to cell activity. Last information section is the Q&A. Question. What does a plant cell have that an animal cell doesn't have? A plant cell has cell walls and may have chloroplast and, large, and a large vacuole, while animal cells do not have those. Some animal cells have very tiny vacuoles, though. Question, what does an animal cell have that a plant cell doesn't have? Animal cells have a structure called centriole, which plays a very important part in animal cell division, but plant cells don't have these. Question, do all the animal cells look the same? No, there are many different kinds of animal cells in various shapes and functions. Even in a single organism, its cells won't be the same in different parts of the individual. Question. What is the main substance that builds up an animal cell? Water. It is the main substance which is found in cytoplasm of animal cells. Our body contains 60 to 70 percent of water and the body of an adult jellyfish is made up of 94 to 98 percent of water. Question. What drives a cell to divide? The simple answer is genes. The DNA inside the nucleus of original and parental cell is the blueprint that shows how to build an organism. Genetic material prompt drives the cell to divide into two cells, then two cells divide to make four, and so on and so forth. Question. Why do animals need to eat food, but plants do not? That is because most of the plants can produce food by themselves during photosynthesis. They use the sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates. On the other hand, animals cannot directly use the sunlight as their energy source, so they need to eat plants or other animals to get their, en to get their energy. Question. Can we see a single animal cell without using a microscope? Yes. Eggs are the biggest single cell in most organisms. Some of them are big enough for us to see. As we know, ostrich eggs are the biggest of them all. All right, and that is all the information for the animal cell. I gotta say, there were a lot of different terms and names I had to look up, so I'm actually pretty excited. I now know how to pronounce more scientific things, 
and I learned quite a lot about animal cells. It does share some similarities with the plant cell, but there are some differences as well. When it comes to the assembly, as usual, some things are already pre-assembled. I was trying to show how you can take some of them out if you just want to give your child or yourself or whoever a challenge by taking everything out, but it can be very hard to get some of those pieces out. They're very snug in there. I was able to get one part out and then I decided, you know, we'll just leave it. But then of course I looked at the image and I looked at what I had in hand and the nucleus, which is the purplish round ball, was facing the wrong way. So of course I used a little scraper and kind of like wedged it in between and I got it out. It took quite a bit, but I was able to actually get it out and turn it around the correct way. Of course, you don't have to do this. That was just a personal choice. And then the only other one or two things I would have to say about assembly is at the last step when you're putting the clear plastic see-through piece on. Mine would not stay in place. It popped out at one point. I don't know if this is just how this puzzle is put together or how it's made, or if it was just the one I received. I have no idea. I did get it to finally stay where it was supposed to be, but I wouldn't mess around with it because literally it takes one wrong squeeze or just handling it wrong and it'll pop, up, pop back out again. The other thing, which may or may not be a problem, and it's pretty much not, is you can see in the picture, it seems the animal cell is leaning back a little bit. It actually has a small clear plastic piece to hold it up on the stand. I thought it was going to be at a 25 more or less degree angle, but it's not. It's actually straight up. I don't really mind. It's just I was kind of expecting it to be tilted back a little bit, but it's not a problem. Like I said, of course, at one point, I was looking at the box, I'm thinking, you know, okay, gotta make sure I check all the different holes, make sure I don't leave any clear bits. And then later you'll you'll see that, yes, I actually did leave the see-through plastic window in the box. I literally made sure to check every single hole. And I was like, yep, we're good here. And then I was like, I'm missing a piece at the end. This didn't take me too long. It took me roughly 25 to 30 minutes. While I was doing this, I had some Earl Grey tea, which I've been loving recently. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to just assemble a anatomy kit and have some tea. As you can see later, I do have the plant cell next to the animal cell. And I gotta say, they look really cool. You can see, like I said earlier, there are some simulator similarities between the different parts. And if you go watch the plant cell video, you can also hear it as well when I'm reading the information. There are quite a bit of parts that are the same. All in all, I say this was quite fun. It's got a total of 24 pieces. And as usual, you can time yourself. Beginner is 16 minutes, average is 13 minutes, and average and advanced is nine minutes. Like I said, it took me around 20 to 30 minutes to put it together. So I haven't even made it to the leaderboard. But let me know what, what, what you all think. If you have this kit, what was your time and what were your thoughts? I would love to hear it. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.